Have you ever wondered how ready mix concrete is made? There seems to be concrete mixes everywhere. Look, I think there's one here. Maybe not. Concrete has been used as a building material since the Roman times. Yeah. In fact, the Roman Pantheon, finished in 128 AD, is the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. Yes. Today, concrete is mixed to different specifications, and when used in construction, it's often reinforced with steel rods, making it incredibly strong, versatile, and easy to work with. Yes. As such, concrete is one of the most frequently used building materials. Its usage worldwide, ton for ton, is twice that of steel, wood, plastics and aluminium combined. But how's it made? I'm heading to the Ash Heldon Quarry where I'll fly my Phantom 4 quadcopter and drone explain the process. GMB Finch are a family run business specialising in aggregates, ready mix concrete, recycling and heavy haulage. I'm meeting up with Lee Finch who's going to explain the process. Lee, how's it going mate? How you doing? Yeah, nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. Welcome. Thanks very much. So I hear you're the man who knows a lot about concrete. I certainly am. Can we go and have a look? Let's go and have a look. GMB Finch have been operating this quarry since 2011. They produce 120,000 tonnes of concrete a year. That's enough to build a road as long as the north and south circulars combined. Producing this much concrete requires an absolute shit ton of sand and gravel. So where, where are we, mate? Uh, we are in Ashton Southminster uh, on the Denji Peninsula, about 40 miles east of London, and we are looking north at the River Blackwater. Obviously a lot of farm around here, must be quite... It's important. very agriculture out here, yes. You're out there on the east, you've got what they call the, the marshes. It's all just sort of massive agricultural farming out there. Looking south towards the River Crouch. OK, and they're the two bodies of water that sandwich... The Denji the Peninsula, Denji Peninsula. Yeah. Denji, that is a, just such a great name. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much how quarries start, like a, an agricultural field. So would you then buy that land off the farmer? We do own this land. I let somebody farm it. Or you may have a mineral agreement with a farmer where you would put in the planning, do all the work, exploit the mineral, pay the landowner a royalty per tonne that goes out the gate. What's the process and how do you get to the sand? How do you get from farm to sand? So essentially the land is covered by topsoil. Uh, that is topsoil that we've stripped off this current area. That is a bund of topsoil that we're looking at. But and, yeah. And sorry, did you say bund? Bund. Bund. Bund, yes. Bund. A, a, this is a bund. A bund, a bund. a bund is sort of a pile of material that's almost with a 45 degree sides and, and a flattish top or it can be a pointy top, however you want to finish it really. Okay, bund. Quite technical then, these buns. Mm. I mean, is there like a bund appreciation society <laughs> or anything like that? No, nothing like that. Uh, okay. Essex County okay. Council are probably a bund appreciation society because they do <laughs> like us to keep them well maintained. They need to be seeded within a certain period of being placed. You will actually put seed on these buns? Yeah, so this, this material... For decoration? No, no, just to keep the soil healthy. I mean, this hasn't been here long. This material will be placed a little bit later in the, in the year back to restore the land that we've excavated and filled. We're quite lucky here. We have mineral pretty much below the topsoil. Some quarries you'd have a clay overburden that would need to be removed, but luckily we don't have that here. So that top layer we're looking at now, Class 1A granular fill is its most common name. It meets various different gradings for, for different applications. Would you use this for concrete? For concrete, your aggregate has to meet certain requirements and this wouldn't meet it. As it is in its crude form, it's got quite a high silt content, which is no good for concrete whatsoever. And this yellower stuff, is that the sand you make concrete with? As you go through the seam, the mineral varies very much from very coarse and stony to pure sand to silver sand. You get the odd little strip of clay. It's just the natural starter and the make up the ground, really. How would you get it out of the ground? Do you have teams of boys just digging it out with a bucket and spade? Uh, no, not, not quite. We use this guy. This Hyundai X330L is an earth-moving monster. The huge bucket can extract well over three and a half tonnes of sand per scoop. Just to put that into context, that's the equivalent of nearly 5,000 Viennetta ice creams.
weighing the same as a well-fed humpback whale at 33 tonnes. The HX 330 relies on extra-wide caterpillar tracks to distribute its enormous load over the sand. Yes. With a 21-foot boom arm, this shit-shuffling monster can extract mineral up to 20 foot below ground level and reach 32 foot in the air. And the entire cab can rotate on its tracks 360 degrees. Think of the possibilities. A machine like this would be my vehicle of choice come the zombie apocalypse. It's powered by a mighty Supreme Cummins L9 325 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine and sports one of the most comfortable cabs in its class. With all that, I am gagging to take a look inside. Tell you what, I've always wanted to have a go on one of these. Oh yeah. Just press the start, start hold it down, and yeah. start the engine. There you go. Very nice. And you're away. Very nice. But down here, this is our safety okay. lever. Yeah. So basically when that's up, everything is now operational. Okay. And obviously that's there to start. So you go to get out, that's going to stop you getting out with the lever still armed. Ah, I see, I see, I see. That, that disarms it, so now nothing does anything here got at you. all. Got you. And then on here you've got your hand control. Yeah. That one is your lift. Okay. And your curl and go okay. bucket. Okay. And then this one is your dipper arm in and out and you rotate. Okay, so that's pretty much it, right? Okay, so we lift up. Yep. We scooch around. Yep. And then put the bucket. Put the bucket, which is it's one sideways. Push that down. Down. We're, we're gonna be like that. That's it. We're, that's it. Hey, I picked some up. There you go. That. You picked some up. I mean, <laughs> you'd be a long time load of dump truck with that amount, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean this bucket picks up a fair few tons. Yeah, um, you've probably got about a quarter of a ton in there. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. And then if you just uh, open the bucket out, that'll pull that, put that down. Now look how much I got. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Steve's probably out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not, not quite, I think. <laughs> Right, so that's safe now. I think that's the dumper truck coming. So should we jump yep. out? Let's jump out and uh, we'll get what's going to get the loaded. This is a Bell B30E dump truck, all-wheel drive on flotation tyres. Carries about 30 tonne of material. He's just backing down to the excavator now, who's excavating the as-raised material from the face, uh, ready to go down to the processing. What would something like this set you back? These are around £220,000. And they're very comfortable, monstrous things. They sort of go through anything, especially with those tyres on. So obviously at the moment, we've got lovely dry weather. Come winter time, that'll be up to his axles and using all six wheels to drive. Those tyres look massive. They are big, very big, yeah, what, what? and expensive. Just you need the tyres that big to get through the to get through the terrain. And how much is that scooping in each time? Do you reckon? Um, he's getting around five or six ton in that bucket. Dumper weighs about twenty ton, and it's got about thirty ton on it, so it's not far off fifty ton. So dump truck's fully loaded up the hill and he's off to the processing plant. So, so you're busy, you're producing a lot of concrete at the moment? Very busy at the moment, yeah. yeah there's a huge global demand at, for all building materials at the moment, especially concrete, as most things are built with concrete. Uh, and there is a global shortage on sand and gravel. I never would have thought there'd be a global shortage of sand, given that, I mean, I've been to some massive beaches and this, what about the Sahara Desert? That is like full blown, sand for far as I can see, why don't we use that stuff? It's not the right type of sand unfortunately, not for making concrete. Um, what, what do you mean? Well, funny enough, I've got uh, out of my uh, snake tank this morning, I've got some desert sand here. Oh. And uh, if you want to have a look, you can see by the particle size makeup that it's too small. Oh yeah, I'll just bring the drone in, sweet as enough. Need to change the battery anyway. <laughs> and so... You can see how fine it is. Yeah. Almost like sugar. You know, funnily enough, in my in my Mary Poppins uh, bag here, I've brought with me, I've got everything in here. <laughs> what I haven't got here is worth knowing about. I was going to say the kitchen sink, but you've got a microscope even got, better. Got, got, a, got a microscope here. You can see here how fine the particles are. Yeah. And how round they are. Okay, I mean, they still look, to me, they still look quite jaggedy. It was, have you got some normal sand as well? Uh, yes, Let me I have, have a little yep. look at that and take that from you. Have me. a little look for that, I'll just scoop Thank some of it. 
here we go. This is some of our mineral ah, that we're excavating. Okay. You can see the difference there. Oh yeah. There's obviously stone in there and yeah. much coarser, more angular yeah. type of sand. I mean, now the difference is apparent. They're like little ball bearings. Yes, so this is like yep. granny and jaggedy, like sugar. Yep. Okay. And this is why you'd want it in concrete, because that will like bond with the concrete or something? Exactly, yeah. It's the, uh, the formation of it created through the grading curve from zero or minus 63 micron through to 20 millimetres. It's a beautiful curve on the fraction size. You have lost me there, but that sounds good. How much material have we got in the back here? Should be circa 30 tonne. So talk me through what's going on here, what you can see. He's just tipping into the feed hopper, tipping the material in there to go into the wash plant to be processed. It tips it quick, doesn't it? It does, really quick, yeah. What's the little mini boot bit? That's a tailgate. Don't really need them, like when the weather's like this, you've got the dry stuff. When the buck drops down, that just covers the back, stops anything coming out the back. And that's the process for the dumper. It's just going to then head back to the gravel pit and do that, it all again. That's correct, yep. This guy, who have we got here? This here is the wheel loading shovel. Hitachi ZX220-6, brand new machine this year. Oh, one thing I have noticed about working here is you need to be damn good at reversing. Yes, yeah. He is just coming to put the material we excavated from down at the quarry face into the brand new Bruce Minerals processing plant. So he's tipping it into the hopper there, which has got a slow feed conveyor in the bottom that drip feeds it on to the main stock elevator. We've got a magnet belt there just in case, because we wash recycled material through here as well. If there's any steel, that belt will pull that out. Where's the magnet? The magnet is inside the belt and it runs all the way around. The whole thing is magnetised. And then it's going to chuck any stuff in there. That's correct. So is that full of Roman coins in that bucket? Uh, unfortunately not. Okay, so this is the material coming up now. Yep, so material's going up this main feed elevator. Drops into that first hopper there, which where it gets jettisoned with water. And that's where it separates the material from your naught to four mil will go to the sand plant and the, anything above that will go to the log washer. Sand's coming in here, the sand's dropping down. That's coming as a mixture of sand... And water, and so water. like a sand slurry essentially, yeah. It gets okay. jettisoned up in the cyclones, the light water and silt gets taken one way and the heavier sand comes through the bottom and drops onto this is what we call a, a, a dewatering screen. Those big green uh, vibrators there, they shake those grids dewatering the sand and then the sand's dropping off the end there and being sized off to two different stockpiles. So 0 to 2 mil soft sand and a 0 to 4 mil sharp sand. Your excess water and silt is then going away, being taken out of the material and that goes away to the silt lagoons. And that is your processed sand? That is your processed sand. And that's what you want for making concrete? That is indeed. So the stones you just chuck away? No, nope, no, nope, the stones are part of it as well. Uh, the sand is probably about 30% of your mix of concrete. The stone is about 60, and the other 10% is made out of water, cement, and admixture. There's more stone in concrete than, than sand? There is. OK. It's actually more important than the sand. It is. So let's see where the stones are going. Is that the log washer there? That is the log washer there, yeah. Log washer named uh, as a log washer because the guy that pioneered it from the States built his prototype using two tree trunks, hence the logs, with paddles on either side. So essentially, you'll see that there's a slight incline on there. So in there, there's a twin, two shafts with big paddles on the side. The stone drops in there with water, and essentially the paddles are pushing the stone upwards and scrubbing it clean as it goes. The sand that comes off and the water and the silt goes back and picks up back up into the sand plant. Then you can see there on that screening deck, you can see the stone going over there. And then there's three layers of screens there that separate the sizes. And they okay. drop as they drop through, they pick up on the different belts and go away to the different sizes. So that's your oversized that, stuff. That's our oversized stuff. That doesn't go into concrete at all, that material. There'll be your 10 to 20 mil. 
this is the largest stuff that goes That's in. That's the largest stuff that goes into concrete and that over there will be your four to 10 mil. We mix those together. When that's going in the concrete mix, your grading curve of aggregate that goes into concrete is zero to 20 millimeters. And it's that grading curve that creates the strength? Yeah, the strength and the perfect mix. That's all your separated aggregate there. What happens next? From there, the aggregate is then taken over to the stocking bays right by the concrete plant. All right, let's go and take a look. Let's go and have a look. So what is going on here then? So these here are our aggregate bays for the ready mix. Uh, so you've got all your aggregates stored in these bins and he's just going into the 4 to 20 mil stone bay now. And you'll see up there you've got your three bins, you've got sharp sand on the left. In the middle is 4 to 10 mil aggregate. That is for special 10 mil concrete mixes. And on the right hand side is, is our usual 4 to 20 mil gravel. In that little hut there on the left is where the, uh, the main control uh, desk is for the ready mix concrete um, with all the recipes programmed in. And once you book into the computer what mix you want, that will then call upon all the different materials around the plant. So this is basically like a concrete vending machine? That is pretty much what it is, yes. So that's gonna come up this conveyor. Up that conveyor, yep. And into this. Yeah, inside there, the paddle mixer. And that's blending all the ingredients together. Yeah, so that your water and your admixtures will be put into there, as well as your sand and stone. And then these two, what look like pipes here, are actually screw feeders. And here you've got cement and your cement substitute silos. So that's that's the grey powder. That's what I thought concrete was, but that's not, that's, that's cement. And does it just do one type of concrete? No, there is thousands of different types of mixes. I mean, essentially, it's all the same thing. Sand, stone, water and cement, plus some additives. But there's so many different applications for concrete. It's such a versatile product. And why do we love concrete so much? Like, why is it such a good material to use? Because it's strong and it lasts for years and it's quite easy to make and quite cost effective. It's the workability yeah. of it. All substructures pretty much are concrete. A lot of modern buildings now look like they're all made of glass and steel, but the substructure of that building would be concrete. Then you'd probably have a, a concrete and steel core that runs through said building. Right, okay mate, what, what have we got here then? Right, so this is one of our mixture trucks. This is an Iveco tracker, semi-off-road vehicle, 360 horsepower, nine litre cursor engine, and that's running a Schwingstetter nine metre drum on the back there, uh, with extra large water tank. He has just pulled underneath the plant. He's getting ready to take his load. Yeah. Drums at speed, ready for mixing. Our batcher manager is there in the office. He is inputting the recipe for this particular order. That'll all go in the computer, and that will then do its magic, and everything will just start weighing itself and discharging into the back of that hopper. And this water tank here, I thought the mixer added water, why does... It does, but sometimes you might have a really, really uh, wet mix that needs to be delivered, that's too wet to travel with. So you've got extra water in there to get up to the specification. Um, and also for washing out. So once on site and they've discharged the load, there'll obviously be a lot of concrete residue in the back of the mixer. That needs to be washed out pretty well, or very well, uh, to ensure there's no build-up in the back of the drum. Otherwise, if it's not washed out, the concrete will just keep building up and building up and building up. And before you know it, you'll have a drum full of concrete. And nobody wants that. Phil Collin knows it. Lee knows it, and now you knows it as well. Don't let your drums fill up with concrete. Because you'll right fuck them up. And a bit like what we've done with the recording of the audio at the end here. I forgot to hit record for the last bit, which was just us saying goodbye. Now, you've probably been saved from a bit of an awkward ending. So instead, have a butchers at some wide shots of the quarry set to classical music. <laughs>